The 12 o'clock kickoff this Saturday is boys to begin at Stamford Bridge. The game that is going to occur this Saturday in the early kickoff is the match between Chelsea and Brentford. This game comes after Chelsea lost a 2-0 uh, lead over, over Arsenal in the Premier League match at Stamford Bridge. Therefore, Chelsea need to rack up these wins ahead of their very tight fixture. And we are going to do an in-depth match preview and tactical preview of what Chelsea expects from Brentford. So, Chelsea will be facing Brentford. Chelsea are currently 10th, while Brentford are 14th. In the previous game, Brentford managed to beat Burnley 3-0. And we're going to see what Brentford poses as a threat for Chelsea. So the key player for Brentford is Mbuemo. Mbuemo plays as a striker, as a center forward. He's quite physical and dominant and very domineering to defenders. Also, Wisa is quite a great threat in the Brentford attack. But we're also going to see how Chelsea can stop them. When we look at the two key, uh, two key players that Chelsea will heavily rely on in this game is Cole Palmer and Raheem Sterling, the ability to break down that strong defensive block. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe. So we're going to look at the lineups. So uh, Sanchez retains his position despite the mistake that he did during the game against Arsenal. I will go for a center back pairing of Badeshile and Thiago Silva. Uh, Kukurela played well against Saka, but I will not start him this game since I will play Colwell as the left back. The reason is Chelsea needs at least three center backs against this dominant side. Rhys James will come in for Gusto. Gusto uh, led to the second goal, and Rhys James is back. The midfield trio of Caicedo, Enzo and Galaga will start. They have been effective. We've done a video. Check the link. Sterling and Palmer will start in the wide areas with Sterling starting down the left. I've decided to drop Modric in this game. Though he's not quite bad, but there will be no space for him to run. And I've decided to go with Jackson because of his height. So the main uh, formation that we sh uh, Chelsea should employ is a 4-3-3 system with the personnel distributed as in the board. The reason why I've gone with Colwell and Jackson is because Chelsea need a lot of physicality in this team and I'm going to explain why. So let's look at what Brentford will pose as a threat for Chelsea. So Brentford, when they play against top teams, arrange themselves or line themselves up in a low mid block of a 3-5-2. Three center backs, three central defensive uh, midfielders and two wing backs. So in this, uh, the main aim of Brentford is to limit central progression and use their wing backs to double up on the opposition wingers. So the main aim of Brentford in this game will be trying to force Chelsea to play the ball to the wide areas. And in this case, their wingbacks will spring forward to press the Chelsea fullbacks, while their forward will cut the back pass, forcing Chelsea to play the ball long, where they can easily win the ball because of their dominant centre-backs, and immediately launch quick, fast counter-attacks. With Mbwemo and Wisa making runs in the box, and the wing backs generating width. This is complemented because the two forwards are quite dominant and physically imposing in the 18 yard box and will be very hectic for a lot of defenders dealing with these physical players. In the defensive third, they will also try to have as many as six players in midfield to limit central progression. The main aim of Brentford is to force Chelsea to attempt penetrative through ball passes where they can play 1-2 with Mbwemo dropping deep, holding off a defender, playing the ball to no guard and no guard playing the ball quick for Wissa to be making these counter-attacks. And Chelsea have lost to Brentford 
through counter attacks in previous seasons. You can see here how Wisa is making that counter attacking run. Another, uh, another great strength of Brentford is their ability to capitalize on set pieces. They've been quite effective and like to play a lot of set pieces and crosses from deep. So Chelsea need dominant center backs. So let's see what Chelsea can do to win this game. It's going to be a very difficult game for Chelsea, but Chelsea have to get it done with. So Brentford will not press Chelsea high up the pitch and therefore Chelsea will easily come out of the first line of uh, progression. So Palmer should uh, push into the right half space and pin the opposition wing back deep. This might see now Chelsea having the three centre-backs with Colwell tucking in to play as a third centre-back with Caicedo being the only solo pivot. This enables Chelsea to outnumber Brentford's first line of pressure. Playing Enzo and Gallagher in behind the midfield is quite important. So Colwell can be receiving with the ball and rather than passing the ball, he can use this by driving with the ball forward, drawing Brentford's midfielder out, then playing a simple pass to either Sterling and Enzo while the other player is attacking the half space. The main aim is to isolate the wing back in a 2v1 situation and ensuring that you get Sterling making this run in the box against an opposition center back, outside center back. Sterling in this position can be quite effective in attempting to win penalties or can even score a goal and this can be quite impressive for Chelsea. Now in deeper phases of play, uh, we expect Brentford to be move into their deep 5-3-2 block. So the position of Jackson and Cole Palmer will be quite essential in this game since they are the ones who are supposed to drag that defense out of position. So in this case, Chelsea should maintain their three center backs so that they can be counterproof against the two forwards from Brentford. The three midfielders might decide to play around the midfield of Brentford rather than playing through it. This is by pushing the wide midfielders to be pushing in the wide channels to try to thread through balls for the likes of Raheem Sterling, while Rhys James will hold the width down the right. Kono Galaga can also push forward so that they can be dragging the opposition's uh, defense down the right hand channel and isolating Sterling 1v1 against his wing back. This will be a great strength since Sterling will capitalize in this opportunity to create chances in the box. Chelsea should also be quite aggressive in their counter press, being able to pounce quick enough to win the ball. The wide center back should be quite effective in dropping deep to pick up the dropping Boemo who tries to link up play, while the other center back covers Wissa and the other third center back acting as a sweeper playing as the extra man this will be quite effective for chelsea especially while they are dealing with these quick counter attacks even if mbuemo manages to beat a center back chelsea will always have an extra center back in defense giving them excellent numerical superiority against this dominant team so Chelsea will like to win this game so that they can move at least 8th position where they can now try to build upon these tough fixtures and hopefully get back in the top 5 of the table. Their remarkable performance as Arsenal should be used by Chelsea to try to learn how to see games out. They should attempt to score the goal before Brentford so that they can invite Brentford forward to press them and this might give Chelsea chances to launch counter-attacks and also open the game. Chelsea should also try and attempt as much to change their fortunes at Stamford Bridge. This will be a huge test for Mauricio Pochettino who would like to get his team back to winning ways. 
If you stayed with us till the end of the video, do not forget to subscribe and like this video. Thanks for watching.